Oh my god. Uh, yes, I'm back. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Terabyte Reacts. We are here today to um to react, of course, um to a new video. I think somebody sent me this a while back. It finally came up on my list. And I said, let me just get this out of the way because I want to do another um a longer um Barristan sell me um tribute or lore video on the channel a longer one um or maybe i'll do a live stream but we'll see about that but in any case uh i am planning to do an, a, a longer barristan sell me video we can discuss okay because on my last video um you know i talked about a lot of things and most of it was just because i'm angry because it, there, there's so many good characters in Game of Thrones, and I just felt like there, there are characters that they could have fleshed out a lot more, make um to that they mean something more to the series other than just some throwaway character, you know. Um, I know they couldn't have done everything. That much I do know. Like I'm not gonna knock them for that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to knock them for the fact that, okay, they can't put everything in the show. So let me get that clear. Because I've always told you guys that there are certain things that can happen in, in the Game of Thrones TV series that just, that um, is not, it, it's going to come off from, from the book's perspective. You're not going to get the same thing. And there's a lot of reasons to that. Um, you know, one of the questions I asked in my last video was that, why are they rushing? You know, and one of the big things about it is that I felt like they could have done it for a lot longer. Not to say that they could have actually went on for 20 seasons. That was just me just ranting. Okay. Um, I think they could have gone for 10 seasons. I think so. 10, um, 10 years. There's a lot to the series that they could have done without the, the big action pieces could have saved them a lot of money right because there's so much good dialogue in the book so much good dialogue that they could have had and it's just acting you get what i'm saying now the biggest challenge that most tv series have and why it's like they can't really keep it going when it comes on to um creating something from something that's already written years before the tv series starts actors aging actors age is a big deal when it comes on to that stuff because if it's a sh if it's a series about kids it's not like anime where they can just do a time skip and everything is okay it's animated so you don't have to worry about actual living beings right you don't actually have to worry about that in anime in real life you have to worry about that because actors age and they have to they, you can't have you know what I'm saying? Like somebody in their 30s, because say, for instance, they started filming. They were in they were a teenager, maybe late teenage years, like 17, 18 years old. Right. By the time the show ends, they're 30 years old. They and the book is still portraying them as a young person, teenager. But as they get older, they don't look that young anymore. They don't look that they don't give you that teenage um, experience unless they're very good actors I mean the technology nowadays too can can really take you there you know what I'm saying and make them look but they I don't want but then again it would lose a little bit of authenticity which you don't want right so there's a lot of factors that come in when it comes on to a TV series and I totally I totally get it it's just that man you just wish they could have fleshed this character out more because you wouldn't have to worry about Barristan that much because it's already old He's already old. You get what I'm saying? So, and I, I think somebody was saying, somebody said in the comment section, somebody was saying that Barristan, you know, he's old, so they couldn't do the fight scenes. Man, for years, actors have been acting and have a, a double. We all know Barristan. Um, you guys, the book readers, you know Barristan is it, he's a monster. You know the history of Barristan. Sell me, right? So I get why you would be upset about it. Trust me, I do. Because I was upset when I was doing that video. 
I think they could have done a lot more with his character because there's no need. They could have had somebody doubling. You know what I'm saying? Like for for the fight scene. If that's what you're worried about, an old man swinging a sword. Like, he doesn't have to do that scene, the actor himself. Somebody else can dress up in in armor and kind of look like sh look like him and do the scene. And, 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 and it would have still been fine. It wouldn't have been that big a deal. Like, nobody wants to see a 70-year-old swinging a sword. But, uh, but at the same time, you know what I'm saying? This is TV. It's TV magic. Let's Let's get it done. You know, people have been doubling stunt, having stunt people do their stunts for them for years. They, I mean, with the budget they have, they could make it look good. They could make it look good. I think they could have done it. But, um, yeah. So let's jump into this video, man. This is one of the one of the things that I was very interested in because it was never explained. You know what I'm saying? Like it was never explained what really happened before they flee. From Valeria, like I want to know what really happened. What uh, um, we got, I got a lot of snippets of it while reacting to some lore videos and stuff like that about how um, Aegon came over, or not Aegon, the the Aegon's dad, I think, came over to Dragonstone. So I know why they left. But I want to know exactly what really happened. If they have a theory on that, it was their lore for that. So let's jump into this. This is from Alt Shift X, of course. Doom of Valeria. What happened to um to Daenerys? Um, ancestors. So let's jump into that and see what that is all about. Let's go. In Game of Thrones Season 7, we learn that Jon Snow's real name is Aegon Targaryen. He's the son of Rhaegar Targaryen, which means Daenerys is Jon's aunt. Yes, Jon has sex with his aunt. Rhaegar's dead now, so is Viserys Targaryen, and Ares and Aemon Targaryen. In the books, there's still Bloodraven, a Targaryen bastard, and young Griff, who claims to be Targaryen, but Brynden's a tree, and Griff might be fake. Go watch those videos. So really, Daenerys and Jon are the last Targaryens, last of the dynasty that ruled Westeros for centuries, and last of the Dragonlords of Valyria. Valyria was an empire that ruled half the world for thousands of years, until 400 years ago, it exploded. This was the Doom of Valyria, yeah, and it's a mystery happened. connecting to magic, faceless men, Lannister gold, and the legacy of Daenerys and Jon's family. So, Valyria was a peninsula to the east of Westeros. Thousands of years ago, the Valyrians were shepherds among volcanic mountains called the Fourteen Flames, until they discovered dragons and trained them as weapons of war. At the time, the area was dominated by geese, by old geese, an empire built on slavery. So the Valyrians and their dragons conquered the Giscari and took them as their own slaves. The Valyrians expanded, building an empire across most of the known world. They called themselves the Freehold, because all landowners had a say in government, but wherever they conquered, the Freehold took slaves, sending thousands down the Fourteen Flames to mine for gold and silver. Valyria had advanced technology and magic. They used dragon flame to shape stone into beautiful towers. They made Valyrian steel swords, long robes, and colonies. Valyria's like ancient Rome, just with dragons. And with incest, the dragon lords traditionally married their own siblings. They believed they were descended from dragons, and wanted to keep their blood pure. The dragon lords lived in the capital city of Valyria, using magic and politics in an endless struggle for power and glory. Valyria was the center of civilization, until the doom came. Every hill in Valyria erupted with fire, smoke, and lava, so hot that dragons were burned from the sky. The earth cracked open and swallowed whole towns. Lakes boiled and the sea flooded in. The clouds rained obsidian and black blood. Within hours, the whole peninsula was shattered, the empire gone. All Valyria's knowledge and technology, like how to make Valyrian steel, was lost. The only dragon lords to survive this doom were the Targaryens, who had left Valyria years earlier, because Daenys Targaryen foresaw the doom in a dream. So, these Targaryens, the ancestors of Daenerys and Jon, settled on Dragonstone, and would later conquer Westeros. Now, 400 years after the doom, Valyria is a smoking ruin. 
accursed and demon-haunted. In the show, Tyrion and Jorah visit the ruins and survive, but in the books, no one returns from Valyria. Whole fleets and armies have disappeared there, including Tyrion's uncle, Gary and Lannister. Euron Greyjoy claims to have been there, but he might be lying. Whether the danger is demons or toxic volcanic fumes, the place is dangerous. The doom still rules Valyria. But what was the doom, and what caused it? Exactly, that's the what doom I know. might have been a natural volcanic eruption. Author George Martin compared the doom to the eruption of Krakatoa and the fall of Pompeii. But Valyria, he says, involved magic. Valyria is a place of fire magic. It's got dragons and volcanoes. It's called the Lands of the Long Summer. Compare that with far north Westeros, called the Lands of Always Winter, which has white walkers and ice magic. These two places seem like centres of ice and fire in this world. Maybe they're connected to the irregular seasons. The North had an icy disaster in the Long Night, and Valyria had a fiery disaster in the Doom, and this affected the world's magic. When the Doom fell on Valyria, magic died in the West. It's only recently returning. So the point is that Valyria had some serious cosmic elemental magic happening, and the Valyrians fucked with it. The Valyrians were sorcerers, and for thousands of years they used spells to tame the Fourteen Flames. But at the same time, they mined the flames for gold and silver. These were volcanoes full of magma and fireworms, and slaves were killed by the hundreds. And yet, they kept mining, deeper and deeper, like some khazad shit. In Lord of the Rings, the dwarves of Moria delved too greedily and too deep, and they awoke the fiery Balrog. Maybe Valyria is similar, they got too greedy, delved too deep, and set off the Fourteen Flames. Because that's what happens when you mess with magic in this world. We're told over and over that magic is dangerous. The Valyrians, in their arrogance, thought they could control magic, but it blew up in their face. So now <laughs> they really stand like Ozymandias or Atlantis, a warning against hubris and the mining of magic volcanoes. But there's still more to the story. In Book 4, Arya joins the Faceless Men, a cult of assassins who worship death. She's trained by the Kindly Man, who tells her that the Faceless Men began in Valyria, among the slaves who mined in the Fourteen Flames. He says the slaves ah. suffered so badly in the mines that they wished for death. The first faceless man gave the gift of death to a slave. Aya argues that the man should have killed the Valyrian slave masters instead, and he replies that the faceless would bring the gift to them as well, but that is a tale for another day. So this is a hint that the faceless men caused the doom of Valyria, which makes sense. The men arose from Valyrian slaves, and they're now based in Bravos, which was founded by ex-slaves escaping Valyria. And the faceless men worship death, so killing thousands in a doom is probably their idea of a good time. But how could the faceless <laughs> cause the doom? One theory is that they used dragon eggs. At Summerhall, it seems that dragon eggs caused a deadly fire. Maybe the faceless used lots of eggs to set off the fourteen flames. But there's another possibility that ties in to a prophecy. The World Book says the Valyrian sorcerers foretold that the gold of Casterly Rock would destroy them. Casterly Rock is home to the Lannisters, who were famous for their gold mines even in Valyrian times. But for some reason, the Valyrians never contacted the rich Lannisters, even though they were so hungry for gold that they were mining volcanoes. Maybe the Valyrians avoided the Lannisters because of this prophecy, but the Lannisters back then really wanted a Valyrian steel sword. All the cool Westerosi families had one, like Stark's Ice and Tarly's Heartsbane. So in the century before the Doom, the Lannisters bought the Valyrian sword Brightroar for a huge amount of gold. We don't know who sold Brightroar to the Lannisters, but if this gold went to Valyria, it could have fulfilled the prophecy of Valyria's destruction. How could gold cause the Doom? The great families of Valyria were in constant conflict. Sometimes they assassinated each other, which was a problem because some of these Valyrians were sorcerers whose spells held back the Fourteen Flames. The World Book suggests that too many of these sorcerers were assassinated, so the spells failed and that's why the doom happened. Mm -hmm. Maybe these assassinations were carried out by the assassins of the Faceless Men. 
the faceless men don't kill for free. They charge a high price. Yeah. So maybe they were paid with that Lannister gold that a Valyrian got by selling Brightraw. So mm. the Valyrians were so caught up in their petty political conflicts that they paid for their own destruction, giving prophecy gold to the death cult that arose from their own slavery and oppression. As Tyrion says, Valyria was built on blood and fire, and they reaped what they'd sown. So that theory brings together all the hints from the text. Lannister gold paid for faceless assassinations, the destabilized magic, and caused the doom. Mm. But you can add some tinfoil on top, because it may tin be foil. that the Valyrians ordered these assassinations not knowing that they'd caused the doom. But maybe it was deliberate. Maybe one of these warring families wanted to wipe out the competition and be the last dragon lords standing. We know the Targaryens were a fairly minor house in Valyria. When they left for Dragonstone, their rivals thought them cowards. But maybe the Targaryens ordered these assassinations to cause the doom to destroy their enemies. They made up some excuse about a dream and went to Dragonstone and watched their own homeland burn, leaving them the only dragon lords in the world, free to become the unopposed rulers of whatever realm they chose. Maybe House Targaryen, Daenerys and Jon's family, is founded on a terrible genocidal betrayal. But that's just speculation. <laughs> Whatever caused the doom, Valyria has lessons Great for its descendants, no. Daenerys and Jon. Because the Valyrians were kinda assholes. They seemed to think that just because they were magic and pretty, they could enslave the world. They conquered peaceful peoples and worked thousands of slaves to death. With their theories of racial superiority, they are basically Nazis with dragons. So when they destroyed <laughs> themselves with their own fire and blood, it's kind of hard to feel sorry for them. Valyrian blood gives Danny and John the power of dragons, magic, and prophecy. But the ruins of Valyria should remind them to use their power with humility and compassion. The Doom of Valyria destroyed a whole civilization's knowledge. Skills like the forging of Valyrian steel were lost forever. But luckily, our world's knowledge and skills are available on Skillshare. Oh, Skillshare man. is an online learning site with thousands <laughs> of classes in design, business, writing, and forging steel. These so if you want your own family <laughs> sword, check out this course. We've used Skillshare to learn some After Effects techniques, and they've got some really high quality courses. If you want to learn how to start a business, edit video, produce music, or found a continent-spanning empire of blood and fire, sign up for Skillshare today. Get a two-month free trial at the link below. Thank you to History of Westeros for some scripting help. And thanks to the patrons, including Zach Whiteman, Thony Ekstrom, Gannon MacDonald, Leslie Mc... All right, Altshiv, I get it. <laughs> he has the most seamless segues like you never expected segues even though you know they're coming you just never expected he should go work in tv like <laughs> they can't really do that on tv <laughs> they can do that on radio like pretty good like they do segues like that in in radio pretty good uh can't really do that on tv during a, a show like it's you know wouldn't work that well but anyways this gave me a lot of insight into the Doom of Valyria. A lot of insight as to what really happened. So the Valerians wasn't all Targaryens. It was different houses that was there. That was the first time maybe I've missed that concept before. Um, there were obviously a lot of different houses there other than the Targaryens. The Targaryens fleed. Maybe they set the whole damn thing up. Who knows? Okay. They flee. They were called cowards. They ended up on Dragonstone. Boom. Valeria. Dunzo. Okay. It's amazing how much of this, how everything connects in the world. You know what I'm saying? It's just like when you actually think about it, you know, the prophecies and the, the amount of stuff that George had to write down. I mean, I can imagine uh, you know, I would love to, to spend like a half an hour just talking to that guy just to pick his brain, just to, to not just about Game of Thrones, but just about life itself, like just to know what he thinks. If there is an interview out there, guys, that's not about Game of Thrones that he has. 
please link it in link it in the comment section please um i would love to watch that um if you guys know of it um you know i'll search myself but i would like to do one that you guys would want me to do and react to um just an interview like somebody talking to him about life itself what is perspective about you know the world we're living in today and stuff like that not about game of thrones like i i, I don't want to do an a, a reaction of him um talking about game of thrones because you're not going to get much because yeah, from what i from what i know of his interviews talking about game of thrones he doesn't talk about much they ask him a lot of questions but he doesn't reveal anything maybe he'll talk about what has happened already you know but he doesn't reveal anything he doesn't connect dots for you you know what i'm saying so it, it's not you get what i mean like i want something of him just talking about like somebody's asking him something outside of game of thrones and what his answers were you know so that would be really interesting but i mean man the world of game of thrones is just so awesome hope you guys enjoy this reaction man thank you guys for tuning in Tell me what are your thoughts on the Doom. If you have a theory out there, put it down in the comment section, of course. And what I think of this whole thing of how they got destroyed, of course. If you overdo something, I think more than likely they, they um, it's, it's just like how you have oil. If you dig too deep into the earth for oil, you can destroy the whole refinery, everything when it comes on to digging for oil. Um, you can destroy the whole thing by digging too deep. It just is the same. You can get destroyed by hubris, by being greedy. You know what I'm saying? You got to know when a gold mine is at its limit. You get what I'm saying? Don't keep digging, 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 searching for more. You might end up with something you don't want. Okay. So that's the lesson from that. I don't, I don't think, I don't think it has. It's a great theory that connects all the dots with with the Lannisters and um the cat the Castle of the Rock prophecy and all of that. But I think more than likely, I believe more the theory of them digging too deep into the volcanoes and the volcano dis d decide um yeah eruption time boom okay so um seems more natural to me. Uh, I could be wrong just it's just what i believe to be true tell me what you think it is um if you believe any of these theories or if you have your own theory put it in the comment section of course it's the first time watching me please consider subscribing to the channel hit that notification bell it's your boy terabyte reacts remember to like the video and also comment in the comment section that i ask you to do before again and again great community here thank you guys for watching it's your boy terabyte reacts and peace